Hello. It's Wittig reaction mechanism made easy time. So what I'm going to do in this video is walk you guys through step by step through the mechanism. And then this way, you guys will be able to see the um, re rationale and logic behind each step. OK? So tip, tip number one for you guys, be really, really good at doing the product prediction for whatever reaction you're, you're going to have to do the mechanism for. OK? So the reason why I say this is because if you don't know what the products of the reaction is going to be, you have no idea what you're aiming for when you're doing the mechanism. And it's really, really easy to make mistakes, right? So what we're going to do first is um, I'm going to ask you guys to take a couple seconds and pause the video so that you can do the product, the product prediction for this, OK? And you guys have already watched my Vidic reaction um, made easy video, right? So then you guys should be pros at this already. If you haven't, the links are down below in the description box. Uh, I want you guys to watch the Vidic reaction made easy video first, and then the Z and E alkenes products explained video second, and then you come here, all right? All right, so um, OK, you guys have an aldehyde and a phosphonium illid reacting, right? So I want you guys to take a couple seconds, do the product prediction, pause my video, and come back in about like three seconds, and we'll do the mechanism through together, OK? So come back in three, two, one. OK, and did you guys get the, these products from your product prediction? You should have gotten a Z-alkene product and a phosphine oxide, right? Um, very often, students forget about the phosphine oxide. It's, it's not always necessary for the, um, on exams, the product prediction. Your professors are mostly looking for the Z-alkene product. But it's very, very useful when you're doing, when you're doing the mechanism to know the um, phosphine oxide product. Because then you'll know what to do with the oxygen when you're doing the mechanism now, right? OK, so here we go. Um, and, the first, um, and the second tip I'm going to give you guys for doing the Wittig reaction mechanism is that Whenever you think about the Wittig reaction mechanism, just think about it as the reaction that has a funky box intermediate in it, OK? And you'll see why in a couple seconds. Ding! All right, so for this reaction, how do you guys want to start it? Where should we do our arrows? So you need to draw the lone pair of electrons that are on your carbon. Oop. Carbon of your yield. And then that's where the reaction is going to start. So the electrons on your yield are going to attack the electron deficient carbon that's right over here. Now, I know that it's hard to see that it's electron deficient, but you guys need to be aware that there's a resonance that can occur in aldehydes and ketones. And that's, this resonance that can occur in aldehydes and ketones is the whole driving force behind a lot of the um, carbonyl reactions that you'll see in orgo 2. And the resonance that I'm talking about is this resonance over here. So this, forget, uh, just completely forgetting about this attack, right? This bond over here can technically resonate up on its own because there's a resonance structure. And essentially, you can get this structure over here, where you have the electrons have resonated up, giving this oxygen a negative charge because now there's six electrons around it. All right? Oh, oops. This was not here before. Yeah. And then there's a positive charge down here on that carbon, right? And that's the reason why I said that this carbon here is electron deficient. Because you can't see it in this form. But technically, half the time, it's the molecules in this form, and half the time, the molecules in this form. And the electrons are resonating up and down, up and down, up and down. So yeah, the electrons of, the, of your ILID attacks the electron deficient carbon over here. And then this kicks up the electrons in the double bond of your carbonyl. Because carbon only likes to have four bonds. He has that right now, but he's getting a fifth bond from the attack. And let's draw what we get from here, OK? So I want you guys to do it out with me, all right? Hit pause if I'm going too fast. I want you guys to draw it out first and check if you have the same um, products that I get. All right, so I'm going to actually slide our hydrogen over here. I'm going to slide that bond over more so we have more space. So it's going to look like that, all right? And then we have the bond with the carbon of the ilid, like that. Um, the carbon chains of the carbon of the ilid are just going to chill out over here. And also, the carbon is still going to be bound to the phosphorus, right? So that's why I'm going to draw him over here, phosphorus. And then the phosphorus has his three phenyl groups. OK, so am I missing anything in this intermediate product of mine? Take a second, OK? Pause me if I'm going to. If, if, if I'm too quick, but we lose the negative charge because the oxygen lost electrons in the attack because the two electrons are now in here in the bond. 
so it's now neutral. Oxygen is actually not going to be neutral anymore, and it's going to have a negative charge because electrons resonated up. The phosphorus is still positive, though, because nothing happened, happened to it. Right. All right, so now negative charge, positive charge, they attract each other in chemistry and L in the real world, too. But anyway, yeah, so the electrons that are on this uh, oxygen that used to be the carbonyl, right, it reaches over and attacks the phosphorus to stabilize things. All right, so what kind of uh, intermediate product are we going to get now? Pause my video here. All right, so the carbon is still bound to the carbon that was part of the illid, right? The carbon chains are still chilling out here, all right? And then the phosphorus is now bound to the oxygen. It is also bound to the carbon from before, all right? And this is where we get to our box intermediate that I was talking about, box. And everything is neutral here, right? Because phosphorus was electron deficient before, but it got electrons. Oxygen was electron rich before, but it lost electrons in this attack. All right, and then we have our box. So now, this is a little bit tricky, but what happens in this part is that, ooh, yeah, what happens in this part is that the oxygen is electron negative, right? So it pulls the two electrons in this bond and brings it over here to form the double bond in your phosphine oxide. And then phosphorus, right? It's gonna have more than it's gonna have more than enough electrons, so it's gonna give up this bond over here between it and carbon. So this is gonna go over here and form the alkene double bond in our product. All right. And after this, we're just gonna get our product, and that's basically it for the reaction mechanism. Not that bad, right? <laughs> okay. And if you guys have trouble keeping track of, track of carbons, I would recommend numbering your carbons when you do the mechanism out. Okay. So in conclusion, tip number one. Know your product. Practice your product predi prediction a lot, so this way you know what your target is in your mechanism. Tip number two, funky box mechanism. Ding! Surprise! And lastly, tip number three, number your carbons. And I'm gonna just show you guys what I meant when I said that. So number each carbon like one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight, nine. So that when you, after the first step, if you, if you have trouble like drawing rearrangements in your molecule, right, you can just carry over um, the numbers. So carbon one's over here. One's bound to two before, right? So this is two. Two is, this is the new part here. Two is now bound to nine. So that's how you know to draw it this way. Um, two is also bound to three, which is also bound to four, which is also bound to five and six. And then Nine is over here, so eight must be over here, and seven must be over here. And when you number your carbons, that's how you keep track of them, and you don't lose or drop, like, drop out carbons during, um, when you, during the, the moments when you redraw the products in the steps for your mechanism, okay? All right, I'll try, and show, I'll try and show you guys how I number my carbons in the more difficult mechanisms that I'll try and um, make videos for later on, okay? Alrighty, I believe this is the end of my Vidic Reaction Made Easy series. So for those of you guys who watched my entire series, thanks for watching. Um, if there was anything that you guys particularly liked or thought was very or was more helpful and you'd like to see it in other videos, just post it down below in the comments and I'll, be, I'll try to include it in future videos, okay? Alrighty, so um, yeah, good luck and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.